Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new series here on the YouTube channel. I am extremely excited to be bringing you a brand new game just released a few days ago. It's Transport Fever 2. I've been streaming this game on Twitch for the past couple of weeks. I'm really enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, it's pretty fantastic and it's finally time to get the YouTube content rolling. So, with that said, let's set some stuff up. The map. We are playing on a large map, which gives us a 14 by 14 area. We are going on a 1 by 1 scale, obviously, and the, we've got medium city density and medium industrial density. So that gives us 12 cities and 19 industry, or 99 industries, sorry. The seed, if anybody's interested, is 0, small f, capital V. That's it. It's that simple. You'd have think it was 8 or 10 or 12 digits long, but it is not. 0, small f, capital V. And the settings for the hills, the mainland, forest, and islands are 1, 2, 2, and 3. So that is, if you have all of them pushed to the far left, you can tick them to the right 1, 2, 2, and 3, respectively. And you will get the proper settings for this map. Now... There's a few things I do want to discuss about the parameters for this playthrough. I do have it set up for sandbox mode. And the main reason I have that, or really the only reason I have that set up, is because I want to be able to do something a little bit unique and uh, special for this run that's a little bit different than I think than anybody else out there is doing right now. What I'm going to do is, we're going to keep all resources on the map in the same locations they're at that they spawn at no problem but we are going to actually get rid of all manufacturing of any resources or products from the map where they spawn and each individual city on the map is going to get their own specialization for which industry they spawn or which industry that they will specialize in and then distribute to the rest of the map so what will happen is, is inside the industrial area of any particular city, we will be putting in the factories for that specific uh, good, whether it's processing oil or producing steel or making goods or whatever. And so I need to be in um, the mo I need to be in sandbox mode so that I can actually physically uh, put those industries, delete them, and add them in where we want them. Uh, there will be one parameter to that. No city can specialize in any process that will uh, basically be part of the, the good that's demanded uh, for that particular city. So uh, if a city is demanding goods, then that city can't specialize in goods. If a city is demanding fuel, that city can't specialize in fuel. Uh, so everything that they produce will be sent out and everything they need will be brought in from another location. So with that done, uh, let's also talk very quickly about how I've got my city set up. I did do a very little bit of modification to the uh, initial populations of the cities. Um, I didn't want any cities that were really, really super small, and I didn't want any that were way bigger than any. So instead of having some cities that were like starting off with an initial population of 50 or 60, uh, the smallest cities are around 120-ish, and then the biggest cities go up to about 200 spread out across that uh, spectrum. Uh, that way we've got, we'll have some pretty good sized cities, um, but nothing like super tiny um, as well. So uh, that's a little bit of uh, stuff I did there. And uh, finally, the last thing I did to set up our cities is I have gone ahead and named all the cities after some of my uh, most loyal and uh, supportive uh, people in my community. Uh, people who have been longtime subscribers to my Twitch channel, who have donated uh, not just their their money, but their time and energy to helping me uh, grow the community and uh, hang out uh, and just kind of, you know, be a, an ambassador for the community, if you will. So we have 12 cities and each one of these represents uh, somebody within the uh, community who's been great uh, to me and great to the community. Uh, and I will continue in every series going forward to uh, uh, do this as well. So if there's anybody out there um, who wants to uh, to join the community and, and support me, 
uh, you will absolutely get an opportunity to get your name in lights. So uh, yeah, as we as we go through the series, I will uh, I'll spend a little bit of time highlighting the cities and you know talking about the person who who represents them. Um, but uh, for now, all you have to know is that's where the names came from, and uh, this is our map. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right in. Uh, don't forget, folks. If you haven't already, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and go ahead and ring that bell uh, so you can get notified whenever we uh, put more content on the channel. I am going to try my very best to make sure that there is a new episode of this series every single day. I'm also planning on starting up new series, not just uh, more series for Transport Fever 2, but also other games like Satisfactory and uh, other you know, simulation manufacturing problem solving type games so hopefully uh you'll enjoy that kind of content and we can uh we can make lots of good things together so uh let's do that and also don't forget to hit the like button it helps uh increase our uh, presence on youtube and it really helps to uh get the channel noticed a bit more so hit that like button subscribe to the channel ring the bell thank you very much for your support now let's get started uh, so let's take a look around at what we've got, and it's not necessarily the only way to get started. Obviously, there's plenty of different ways that people get maps started. There's lots of things that work. Um, but step one for me on any map, uh, particularly so far playing uh, a couple different playthroughs on Twitch uh, of this Transport Fever 2 game, is I try to get people moving first. And primarily that means... Uh, just setting up bus lines, uh, we'll, we'll call them bus lines, carriage lines, and just having people uh, move from city to city uh, at moderate distances via carriage. And then also, uh, we'll also have a, uh, you know, before too long, we'll get a couple of quick train lines going to, to hook up the right people in the right areas uh, as well. Like potentially there could be a train line here or something like that. But I think the first step is always to get bus lines set up and uh, ready to go. So that way you get people moving. You start to uh, get the um, the public transportation destinations uh, increase so that you know you can have the cities just be a little bit bigger. And then as you start to implement new industry, uh, it's just that many more people to uh, consume the goods and increase the uh, volume. So. Let's do it. Let's take a look. So we have, uh, like I said, we're on a tropical map, obviously, and we're actually using the Asian, uh, we're going to be using the Asian uh, vehicle types, which I have not done yet. So it should be pretty fun to see what we've got there. Um, we have uh, some isolated towns over here. So like, since, for instance, Hendoniapolis is going to have to basically use boats uh, to bring a lot of stuff in. And then, of course, they will have, there is a bridge, actually, they put in here for us. So we will be able to use that bridge early on, probably, as well. But going to be a lot of boats in Hendu Neopolis, I'm sure, which I'm sure Hendu will be very pleased with, because he is the boat guy. Um, we have uh, some more cities up here to the north, which are not completely isolated, but they're uh, they're going to need some work to get uh, hooked in. Um, uh, here's Brompton over here. We have an, a little island off to the side here. Uh, where Dogetopia and Dediopolis live. And uh, yeah, I think we're probably going to have a line hooked up here. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, set up. I might leave this and have a train line set up in here. It feels like the right distance to set up a train distant, train line. And there's a relatively flat area. And that's an important thing to indicate to well, as well, is you want a nice flat area to set up trains. Um, because uh, as you set up trains... We have in 1850 have very very low power trains, and uh, anytime they have to go up or uh, up any sort of hill, they're going to get slowed down, and that's not what you want. So, uh, I'm thinking that we'll get something sort of a train set up there at some point. But in the central area where we have these cities, in this main central area where there's a fair amount of land, I'd like to get some bus routes set up between a number of these cities. Um, you don't want to make them too long. Like this is a pretty long line. Uh, up to here that might be a little bit too long for the first step this is probably just right here um, we'll be able to potentially put down a few roads and get Druidville hooked up somehow through these uh, farms maybe just add a little bit more road here 
uh, and certainly we've got space over in here to get started as well. So let's jump right in and start to take a look at these cities and how we can set them up. So Josh land here is very central and so it makes a lot of sense. They're probably going to have a route to at least three cities to start. So we can start off by uh, using this city uh, as a main hub for having a, uh, we're going to put in a depot. And it doesn't really matter where you put depots. For whatever reason, I always tend to put them uh, somewhere in and around the, uh, the industrial area. I don't really know why. It just, I guess it just seems fitting to me to have a depot in that type of area. Now we've got a bit of a hill here. Um, I don't necessarily want to uh, you, you do there. I think I'm going to put it just put it in here for now. This will work just fine like that. And I like to make things square. It's just how I am. Throw that down in there. And now we have a depot and we'll be able to put uh, carriages on all our lines uh, from uh, Josh land, which is very central to any of the surrounding cities. And now we need to start setting up the bus lines. So we're going to find a place to put some buses. And obviously early on the cities aren't too big and you can usually find one bus stop pretty central that will hit all parts of the city. And then of course from there you can make uh, adjustments as needed. So we have a city, uh, we have a road, sorry, leading out here, out there, and out there. And so obviously at this junction right here, we're probably going to want to put it. Um, it might make the most sense to put it here. And then that way it's basically uh, a quick shot um, for both these lines. And then this one just comes down here. You could potentially, uh, if you wanted to, put two here and then put another one there, and then this line would not have to make that turn and get clogged up at the same location. Um, it might actually be pretty smart. And then if anybody uh, needed to go from, for instance, uh, Shepland over to Druidville or Curryburg or whatever, um, they would be able to just get off here and go to the next uh, stop and pick up a train going or pick up a bus going the other way. Um, so I think I might actually do that. It's just a little bit of extra investment, of course. But I'm going to go ahead and do that like that. And so that way, um, it's almost like a central hub. Like, so if anybody does want to go through Joshland to another location, um, this is basically a little uh, a hub for you to be able to make a transition. So I like that a lot. And we're going to come over here. Rangerton is going to be part of this. Uh, the line comes in this way. This is a pretty big city to start off with. We may or may not be able to get the whole thing in. At the very least, you want to make sure that you get in all of your residential. Because it's the people are leaving their homes in the residential area in order to find their way to uh, either work or find their way to go shopping. And if they're going to work or shop in another city, they're going to want to be able to leave their home and immediately get on the bus. Um, there's a pretty good chance I'll need a second bus line within the city just to push people back and forth. Um, I don't personally think it's a good idea when you're having uh, basically an express line between cities to have a second stop within a city. So basically go Josh Land down here and then make two stops and then leave. I think an express line literally has to be one stop to the next. And if you do have to have a second stop or a second line just transferring people uh, back and forth, then you make that accommodation with with a second line. So that's how I like to do it, and uh, that's what we're going to do. So if we take a look here, we have some residential down in here. Uh, you can, of course, actually just go ahead and up here and go land use, and you can see there's a little bit of industrial, which I don't like having my industrial mixed in with my commercial, so or with my residential, sorry. So eventually we'll 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 do what we can to get rid of these when we have the money and delete these out and try to push the industrial across across this line and keep industrial down here and then this will basically be the uh the railroad tracks if you will to the uh, residential uh that would grow to the north so let's go ahead and say that we want to make sure that everything above this line is definitely covered by this bus line and looks like if we put it uh somewhere in here recover if we go over here we miss some if we go here we're good so let's go ahead and put it right there and i do like to make them go i do like to have one going each way some people do some people don't 
Um, I just like it because it makes the Lotus come down and then they'll quickly turn around and they can hit people coming back the other way. Um, so this is almost like, this will typically be come in, this will be like the drop off section and then this will be like the pickup section. And they'll typically, you'll, you'll be able to pick people up and, and head back the other way. So that is that. So we're going to go ahead and let that be the bus stop there. Uh, let's go, I think we could definitely get a line down to Curryburg. So we'll go take a look here. And again, it's the residential area is basically all to this side here. So pretty good sized city. Again, we want to make sure we hit all the residential. I think we're good in here. You, you always want to make it a short, like a short, a trip into the city before it can turn around and express back. Um, you don't want to have to weave through four or five different streets to get to the point and then have to come back. So the quicker you can get this, the better. So we can hit all the residential from right here, but we can't from here, right? Yeah. So we could actually put it here as well. And that also hits all the residential. Um, we hit all the residential here and we're actually better for the commercial. If we're here, we miss all this commercial. But if we're here, we still hit the residential over to the uh, right, but we capture most, if not all, of the commercial to the left. So that makes, uh, makes it so the whole city is essentially covered. So let's go ahead and put it right, I'm gonna put it right there. So they'll come in, drop off, pick up, and leave. And finally, we're also gonna throw one in Shepland. And uh, again, just taking a quick look, we're actually gonna have to come this is actually a bit of a long windy road. Eventually you'd want to make this road Yeah, you know, there's a couple of big hills in the way, but eventually you'd want a little bit more of a direct line, but I don't think we're ever going to be able to do that until we can afford to go through those hills. So um we're gonna come in this direction and I think if we just smack it right down here in the middle, we will be able to cover the whole city. So there are one two and three bus lines that we could set up. I, I'm gonna be calling them bus lines. They're carriage lines at this point, obviously. Uh, other places that we can connect. Uh, I like this Rangerton to Hendu Neopolis across the bridge line. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, we do have our bus line in here already set up right there. And we also are probably going to need a second line in this city uh, to hook up because the this isn't this currently the the commercial area is currently not hooked up with this line. So what we could actually do is have the um, we could potentially have the Hindu Neapolis line come in here and express to a location somewhere in here. And then set up just a quick internal route like this uh, with two or three carriages so that people can make the switch here and that way people can get around the city and uh, switch over if they wanted to go for instance from Hindu Neapolis to Josh Lane. My only objection to that is that people who are in this city and want to go to Hindu Neapolis cannot take a direct route from their residential area to here. With that being said, if we do set up the line, for instance, right here, there's not a lot of the residential that doesn't uh, allow people to pick up this line. There's just a few here that wouldn't pick up this line. So for now, I think I'm gonna be happy with this and we're gonna go ahead and go boom and boom. And we're gonna go into Hindu Neapolis and find a nice central location. And here again, the city's not too big, so we should be having no problems setting up everybody to meet and then what I'll do is because uh, we're this we don't want to send from here so I'm going to go ahead and put a second depot and I'll put that in Hendo Neopolis. Rangerton doesn't need one for this line and then it wouldn't need one as well for Hendo Neopolis because uh, we can put them on here. Now you might be saying why not just put down more? Well money can be tight uh, early on uh, and you want to make sure that you're getting as much return on all your investments as possible and there's no point in paying uh, upkeep charges on a depot for every single city when out of the gate early on you don't really need it so just it's just a little bit of a financial uh, choice to to keep yourself just being nice and efficient which is always good in a business simulator game uh, so I think I'm going to place it right here uh, on the outskirts I'm going to just slide it actually right in here 
just off the back of these like that and squeeze it up as tight to the road as I can and pop it down. So we'll be able to get lines going from here to here now. Now I mentioned earlier, I feel like uh, this kin show is just a little, because there's no direct line, it's, it's pretty far either way. Like even this is pretty far, but then you still got to make this trek. Um, so I think that's something that we would set up kind of secondary. Like once we have, a, we'll spend a little bit of money later setting up roads to do that maybe. But I do believe that we could definitely get Kinsho coming up to Morphous City here. But as you can see, they have not permitted us to uh, have a road. So we would actually need to put a road down to here, for instance. We could just make kind of a direct pass just like this. And we could hook these guys up. So let's quickly just do that then. Let's go like this. And we can see what kind of a line they can give us off of here. Um, I don't know if I like that line. We want to get to here, so I'm gonna go like this to start. And go like that. And then basically this is super flat. And it's always good if you can to have flat roads. So roads that are literally uh straight across. And it and the way to make sure you do that is this, this is basically, if you don't have this open, it basically just fits the contour from the starting point to the end point and makes whatever adjustments in the middle. If you click this once, it sets you up. Now you're, it's still very close and similar, but now it's perfectly flat. So that's your option. And then of course, if you go like this or like that, you are making adjustments uh, on the overall height. So when you're, when it's close like this, it's, not probably worth the extra six or seven grand to make it slightly more uh, flat. And uh, in the future, you'll have things you'll want to spend that money on more. Uh, the only mound we really have is basically this mound to get through, um, which I don't mind. We're, I think we'll keep on the straight line just a little bit. And then I'm going to probably try to turn this just so that we have a direct line. The more direct the line is, the better. I don't want to have to make my own new road here when we've got a road here, but uh, I don't mind this at all. And again, I always try to check that. I like this because we're going to be on a slightly uphill incline, which is good because we're heading towards a hill. And then we continue to move up and you can see there we're cutting through. We're not going to want to spend 220,000 to cut through this hill this early on, but we do want to go somewhat through that hill. So what I would actually do is try to actually go to one side of it. And we're going to come down like this and try to hook up in there, I think. So without spending too much money, you need to find a point at which you can get the right line up and not spend too much money moving dirt. And then we'll cut through from here. So we have a slight incline. And then we'll go basically across the top of the hill with obviously spending some money cutting into it a bit. So we'll go ahead and cut this straight line like this. And then we'll be going back down the hill. But you don't want to, you got to remember, you don't want to go too steep down the hill because coming the other way, you're going to have to go right back up it. And I think I like this right here. So let's go ahead and click that. I am going to delete this road here. I have to delete this one as well because I think it'll be in a road. And we'll just set this line like this. And yeah, that's not really useful. We'll go like that. And then finally, one final move. Mm. Huh. What does that do? That's just going to there, right? I can delete this and make a nice. A nice line for us. So let's go ahead and just do that. Just a, it's just more of a picky thing than a necessary thing, but it's done. And uh, and then of course we will be able to set these lines up later if we wanted to. But I'm not going to waste extra money putting in a road that's completely unnecessary. So we have a pretty direct line coming out of Kinshu Town. Uh, it's going around this crude oil reserve, which of course will stay. Crude oil and any you know farms and any natural resources stay. 
It's all of these that we're going to get rid of, but we'll be doing that over time because it costs money to actually delete them. And of course, we don't want to spend money on that right now, but relatively smooth direct line coming out here. And I think what I'm going to do is just maybe clean this up in here. Uh, I think it's worth a little bit of money to... Yeah, that's fine. Um, obviously, straight lines... Uh, straight line is the fastest... Uh, between or fastest way to get between two points but uh, that's not too bad a little windy at some point in the future we could go ahead and delete all this and make one straight line go bang bang but this will work for now so again we're going to need to set up locations for our uh, bus stations and in Kitcho Town it actually appears as though we're going to have to be a little bit creative because we have a little bit of a ways to go We, we can't just stop them here. We want to we want to hook up the residential area. So let's go ahead and put it right here. So it'll come down in, turn around and come back out. And then from here, uh, again, residential area is kind of on the opposite side, but not a very big city to start with. So we don't have to worry too much. We can still have the whole city hit and by dropping them off right around, uh, let's say right here. Um, something to keep in mind when you're setting this up is yes, if you put it here, it still catches all this, but it's a really relatively narrow area. And if the residential continues to grow this way along this road, because it does it on its own, it could very well potentially start growing this way. Then the further you put it this way, the less it's going to catch. So without having it go all the way down here, having it just be a little bit towards this street here means it'll continue to catch more and more residential as the city grows without having to uh, worry about putting another stop in. So even though you could have put it here even and caught all of this putting it a little bit further down will will future proof yourself a little bit so that's just a thought to keep in mind so bang bang is another shot there and what else do we have we have kind of a long route especially since we have to go around this is a bit of a long route um and what else is everybody else hooked up though druidville is not currently hooked up we're gonna have to put roads in for this guy um i think we actually could come through we actually have a road coming down through here from rangerton we could actually do a straight shot right through here it's a little bit of extra cash but it's better than doing this or this so i think this is probably actually our best option is maybe to spin off of here and go straight shot right to here and then we basically wind through the farm into Rangerton and that kind of hooks us up and it makes I, I like to make sure that every city right out of the gate is going to have some way of being hooked up with uh, with something else just so that we don't um, we don't have any city left hanging you know you want to have equal opportunity public transportation so let's just turn ourselves you know actually do what i like to do instead of doing this and guessing the exact straight point like because on this you can't really tell exactly where the straight comes out instead of doing this one first i actually prefer to line up our host destination so we're, we basically want to come straight through here like this right so just a line basically right through here so what i prefer to do then is pick a point at which we'll be able to hook this up but perhaps make it like this and then you can kind of see that line is good right there now we're not going to use that one yet but um that line right there is kind of a good trajectory so if we just kind of set it up along that trajectory we will be in good shape so that's relatively flat we get through a little bit of a mound here and then, of course, now you could just do this and have a nice smooth line uh, exercising that. And then we will continue to do this. And again, just little mounds like this for a little extra money. Absolutely. Don't put your don't put it out. Uh, just go ahead and spend that little bit of money and come through those areas. Now, obviously, the longer distance you go, the more adjustments need to be made along the way because you've got... Um, you know, you basically have a big teeter-totter and 
the space between here and here needs to all be filled in and you don't get the opportunity to go up slight hills and down slight hills uh, you're basically cutting through every single hill to make those two points match as directly and as straight as possible. Um, so when you're when you're fighting on the cash front, uh, I try to make my sections eh, a little bit on the shorter side, not spend too much more than five figures, you know, ten or fifteen thousand. Uh, again, if you come here, the number gets much bigger because you've got a big trench you're going through but if I make it half the length and just basically go slightly uphill just very slightly uphill to basically the top of this mound for 12,000 then I can basically come across the mound for another eight and instead of spending 60 to go from here to here I spent 12 plus 9 so like literally a third or so of the amount of money just by going slightly inclined to the top of this mound and then coming across it. So let's keep going through and we want to hook up into this. So that's kind of what we want to do there. So when you go like this, you're not going to want to hit that, but it gives you an idea of the path you want. So you know you basically kind of want to start turning in order to have this shortest distance. Uh, so you can basically think, okay, I need to put it right about here. So let's go ahead and grab that and just start a turn somewhere in here just like that and then you click that and then again you're you're on that same kind of trajectory like you were doing but again you don't necessarily want to do that you just come maybe on a straight line out of here for a little ways and then turn it in and i think that's pretty good bit of we have to come up this hill eventually anyway to get to this point that's not a bad spot so let's go ahead and hit that. And now we have a direct connection through Ranger. Now we are making a bit of a detour through the farm, but hey, who doesn't like to take a bus through some nice farmland, right? Looks pretty good to me. Um, we could go ahead and delete this and make it a bit more direct. Um, take a little bit of the wobbliness. It is a pretty big distance. Well, it's not too bad. It's about similar to some of the other ones. I guess it's not too bad. Nice straight shot here, in here. You know what? It's going to bug me. I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's just a little bit extra money. But I am going to go ahead and spend the money. I'm going to come out of here like this. Like this. And like that. That way we're not making that big wobbly turn and coming in like that. It's nice and direct. Nice and smooth. Looks good. I, I like it. Another option we could do too, I suppose, is um, we could bypass this and basically make this line go straight here. Again, it's a bit more money. That's probably something, an improvement I would make in the future because it's another 15 or 20 grand I don't need to spend. Because when you think about it, another 20 grand means one more carriage we can put on a line to start making us money, right? So um, I don't think that's something worth correcting now. So, Druidville's got a connection. Rangerton's got two connections. Hendoniopolis, Joshland, Shep, Curry, all have connections. We've got Kinshaw to, to Morphus Town, all good to go. We do have the option of running up around this uh, here. It's pretty direct, even though you have to come around here. So we could potentially hook these two up. Um, there's not a whole lot of other options, particularly for Brompton. It's a long ways to anything else. And Beerland uh, is in position where it could potentially do a ferry. Although I'm not sure if we could do a ferry to Morphus because I think this is actually blocked off. If we do in the future want to do a little bit of map manipulation, we could open this up and get ferries into Morphus City. I think that's actually something I would like to do is have a ferry run right here. But in the meantime, uh, that is a pricey proposition and not something I want to get into. So we're going to leave that. Um, it's a bit of a long stretch. I'm going to leave that one. We'll think about that one. The last place here is, is a road or a train through here. That's the decision we need to make. Um, and I think we're going to leave that for the next episode as well. These are, we're going to actually leave this and this for the next episode. But what I do want to do before we move on to another episode is I want to get these lines up and running. So let's go ahead and go into create line and go new line. And we are going to go from 
there to there. And we are going to go with another new line that goes from Joshland to Shepland. What is that doing? Oh, it's just doing a red round that's fine. Um and now one thing I didn't do, I, I did put the extra stops in. I don't have them making a stop on the way back. At this point, I think I might go without that. I'm I'm still kind of up in the air about whether or not I like two stops or not. I think I definitely like two stops on longer lines, for instance, through cities, so that you can kind of hit it going both ways. But for an express line, I don't necessarily know I like, I don't think I, I like to have a second stop. Just as another spot for the carriage to step up and wait. And I'd rather just have it going. So for now, I'm not gonna put the second stop coming back, but in the future, if we were to have, for instance, lines coming through a city, we'd wanna have the stop going both ways. So we've at least put the infrastructure in for that. but probably didn't need to put all the stops in right now you didn't you just certainly didn't have to um and then of course the next line we want to do uh that line's good so it's another new line and we're going to go from here and we're going to head down into curryburg so that's another line now i'm going to get these lines named but i want to get the lines made first and then we'll put them in now, i do have some nomenclature that i want to use for setting up our uh our lines we do have uh one coming here, so another new line. Uh, again, that will be coming from here. Oh, did we not put? Oh, I don't think we put. Uh, my fault. I don't think we put in the uh, stops in Druidville. Is that correct? I think that is correct. This is a really weird city. It's got some uh, some residential down in this direction. It's got residential down in this direction. So it's kind of a uh, an interesting one. I think what I'm going to do to start with is just do the one stop that covers as much as we can uh, and then we'll deal with the city's organization problems in a little while uh, so i'm going to uh i'm going to throw that down in there and i'm going to come from rangerton in here so there's another new line uh it's actually this one and we're just going to add station there so that's that line there boom 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 all right, uh, and then we also want to go Rangerton to Hendoniapolis. So again, that is, uh, sorry, I'm hitting the wrong things. That's going to be another new line, and it's going to go from this one over to here, just like that. And continuing along, we want another new line. It's going to go from here to there. So that's six lines that we've set up connecting people isn't those pretty lines there you go so the only cities that aren't currently connected with any other city are these two up here and these two here uh, for these two here we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do as far as perhaps having a ferry run uh, for for these guys and then potentially uh, even setting up maybe a road to come down to here which is it's gonna be pretty far or we just live with that one there we probably live with that one for the short term it won't be particularly efficient but uh we want to get them going so that's probably what we do but we'll, we'll decide that in the future so there's six lines let's go ahead and start to get some of our vehicles on these lines so from josh land we have our depot and of course, it is 1850, January 1st of the year. And we have a grand total of one option. It's the Troika. And it goes a, a whopping 18 kilometers an hour and carries a whole three people. That actually, is that, I'm pretty sure the American version and the European version carry four. That's got a capacity of just three. <sighs> Man, I th I'm, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm forgetting, but I thought it was four, and then the next one you get after that is five. That is quite weak. But hey, it's what we're doing. It's what we got. Now, interestingly enough, uh, I think they're cheaper. 
because I'm pretty sure it's 23,000. Or maybe I'm misremembering that too, but it's somewhere around 23,000, I thought, for the first ones. Hmm. Maybe I'll check into that. I'm curious about that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of these. I'm going to go ahead and grab six of them. And I'm just going to grab, put two of them on, no, not having named the lines is going to be a thing, but I'm, I'm going to spend the time naming lines uh, in between episodes so you don't have to see me uh, typing into the uh, into the game a bunch of times. So we're going to put yellow, red, and green. Uh, so the first one, we're just going to go uh, there. And the next two will go on to there. And the last two will go onto the green line like that. And what I do, what I like to do is keep them spread out. So I either buy one or two now, and then one or two later, uh, and then basically just kind of have them spread out so that they're not all clumped together. So I tend to do that. Uh, let's also come over here. And uh, oh, we've already gone to Kerberg. What are we doing? Uh, we need to set up a line coming out of Hendoniopolis. So we go like this, and we need to get two more vehicles bought here, and we'll put them in there. And big question is, I don't think, I think I need two more. Unless I'm mistaken, I don't think I put a depot. No, I didn't. I didn't put a depot in either of these cities. So we're going to need a couple more depots, I think. Uh, so let's go depot. Um, let's just put it up here. Does it really matter? Uh, and let's put it... Hmm, where do we want it? Let's not worry too much about it. Let's put it in here. Spin that bad boy around and... Pop it in there. And one more depot. And I guess we're going to need it. Can either go in Rangerton or Druidville. Let's just go ahead and throw it into uh, to Druidville here. And let's make it right here. Like that. So now we have uh, all those, and then we can go ahead and purchase yet again two more of our troikas and stick them on the blue line, which goes there. And then finally, over here, we're going to buy two more vehicles of the troika variety and stick them on our orange line. So now we have six lines set up. And we have six, we have 12 vehicles ready to jump on them. So before we send you off for the end of this episode, I just want to go ahead and hit play. And let's just take a look at our very first vehicle of the run. We actually have a bunch of them sliding out. Aren't they pretty? They actually are kind of nice looking. Certainly different looking than uh, the other two versions. We actually have three horsies out in front. Uh, but unfortunately, only room for three people in the back. I actually like those. They're pretty nice. So these guys are heading off to pick our people up. Nobody to pick up there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you guys off for the end of this episode... Um, I'm also going to, in between episodes, I think I might, I'll name the signs for sure. Maybe add on a couple more vehicles for each line. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to maximize, uh, the efficiencies of the lines yet. I'll save that for stream, but just to get a few more guys rolling. And when we come back for episode two, we will take a look at a train line here. And we will take a look at the uh, options for this, these two cities and potentially setting up some ferries. Maybe we can get one going there. I would definitely like to see some ferries set up uh, early on. So potentially in Druidville up to Curryburg, we might get some ferries going. 
and then maybe Curryberg to Dogetopia, and perhaps Sheplin into Dediopolis will be the uh, the options for some theories that we could set up. So uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode, folks. Hope you're enjoying. I hope you're excited about uh, this run. I know I am. I am super excited, and uh, I can't wait to get back for episode two and show you some more progress. So until later, don't forget, once again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell, like the video, helps a lot, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.